When we think of really huge seafaring vessels, many of us probably call to mind the doomed luxury liner the RMS Titanic. The reference to its enormous size is right there in the name, but that ship set sail on its one and only voyage over a century ago. And in the intervening years, there have been some truly titanic ships that have traversed the world's oceans. In fact, the Titanic is dwarfed even by the most common of modern day cruise ships, and those ships look tiny when compared to the vessels we'll be looking at today. The top 10 largest ships ever constructed. For reference, a ship's size is measured using a specific set of specifications. Of course, these generally include length and width, often referred to as beam, but also taken into consideration is tonnage, which can be measured in several different ways and is not always a measurement of the ship's actual weight. For our purposes here, we'll be looking mainly at gross tonnage, which is a standard measurement and related to the overall interior volume of the ship. By way of comparison, the mighty Titanic measured 882 feet long by 92 feet wide, with a gross tonnage of 46,328 tons. Impressive, but not not even close to the specifications of the first and smallest ship on our list, the MS Vale Brazil. Owned by the Brazilian firm Vale, the ship is the largest bulk carrier in the world. Construction on the vessel was completed in 2011, and it was designed for transporting iron ore from Brazil to Asia, capable of hauling enough steel at one time to construct three Golden Gate bridges. The MS Vale is 1,188 feet long and has a width or beam of 213 feet, with a gross tonnage rating, or GRT, of an astonishing 198,000 980 tons. Well over four times the GRT of the Titanic, Vale is still in service, cutting an imposing figure along the waves of the Atlantic, but its route is highly strategic. Due to Chinese maritime laws, it is unable to enter Chinese ports, as it is simply too heavy. Distribution ports in the Philippines and Malaysia allow its cargo to reach destinations within China. When it first entered service in 1975, the Jarmada was among the very largest ocean-going vessels in the world. An oil tanker with routes crisscrossing the globe, the Jarmada sailed the world's oceans for 32 years before finally being retired in 2008. It's currently in use purely as a storage tanker, but during its three decades of service, it supplied crude oil to ports all around the world. Some of Jarmada's specifications are no longer a matter of record, but the enormous ship sported a length of 1,225 feet and was capable of carrying massive amounts of cargo to the tune of 380,000 tons. Its top speed of 16 knots was quite impressive when it first set sail, making it not only one of the biggest ships in the world in the mid-1970s, but also one of the most powerful. It may have an inglorious use today, but with its faithful service service record and incredible specifications, Jarmada is still remembered as one of the most impressive tankers to ever sail the seas. Of course, mighty as it was, the Jarmada-class vessel wasn't the only insanely huge oil tanker navigating the world's oceans in the 70s. The Globetick Tokyo Super Tanker first set sail in February of 1973 and distributed oil around the world for 13 continuous years. Its 1,243-foot length, longer than four football fields put end-to-end, -end, and 203-foot beam made it a sight to behold, as did its distinctive black and red color scheme. Globetick Tokyo could also cruise along comfortably at a speed of 16 to 17 knots, especially impressive considering its gross tonnage rating of 238,232 tons, about five times that of Titanic, and dead weight tonnage or capacity of 484,000 tons, over 100,000 tons more than the Dramata class. The Globetick Tokyo was scrapped in 2003, but at the time it first touched water, it held the title of the largest supertanker in the world. Its sister ship, the Globetick London, which set sail in 1973, had identical length and beam specifications, but amazingly, it could hold quite a bit more weight, with a capacity rating which exceeded the Tokyo by a respectable 276 tons. The TI class of supertankers, constructed by shipbuilder Tanker International LLC, may not technically be the longest or largest ships in the world in terms of sheer size, but when it comes to gross tonnage, they rule supreme. There are four currently in various types of service around the world, the TI Africa, TI Asia, TI Europe, and TI Oceania, although two are currently being used as moored storage vessels. Their massive GRT of 234,006 tons is currently tops among active vessels, and on top of that, they are among the most aesthetically pleasing oil tankers ever built. The TI class 16 to 18 knot top speed goes a long way toward maximizing its earning capacity, but its eye-popping size also means that there are some waterways which it simply cannot navigate. For example, the the Panama Canal is off limits, as the ship is too wide to fit through its recently built locks, and when fully loaded, the Suez Canal is a no-go 
as well. But the vessels are also notable for their wealth of high-tech features and sensible dual-hole design, which minimizes the chance of a catastrophic oil spill in the event of a hull breach. The TI-Class checks in with a length of 1,243 feet and a beam of 223 feet. When it was launched on its maiden voyage in 2006, the Emma Marsk was the largest container ship ever constructed. Today it has seven sister ships, all of which are considered to be among the largest and highest capacity container freighters in the world. The vessel's astounding top speed of 25.5 knots makes it among the fastest vessels of its type in the world, and is due in part to the fact that it is powered by the world's single largest diesel engine, a marvel of engineering which itself weighs 2,300 tons and is capable of a power output of 109,000 horsepower, while burning through 3,600 gallons of fuel per hour. The Emma Marsk boasts an impressive gross tonnage of 174,794 tons and measures 1,302 feet long with a beam of 184 feet. During the 2006 holiday season, the vessel made headlines for a whimsical reason. The press caught wind of the fact that it was bound for the UK from China, loaded to capacity with Christmas goods. It's for this reason that for only a brief time, the Emma Marsk was known around the world as the SS Santa. The SO Atlantic and its sister ship, the SO Pacific, were two of only seven ships in all of maritime history to carry a capacity rating of over half a million tons. Beginning service in 1977, the supertankers plied the world's waters for 25 years before they were decommissioned and scrapped in 2002. The tanker's immense size meant that not only were the Panama and Suez canals off limits, but the English Channel as well. They sported gross tonnage ratings of 259,532 tons, and both clocked in with a length of 1,300. 33 feet and a beam of 233 feet. Their relatively slow top speed of about 15 knots is understandable, considering that these gargantuan vessels were both powered by single propeller steam turbine engines, practically unheard of among today's modern tankers. Even though they long ago met their ultimate fates, the SO Atlantic and SO Pacific were widely recognized in their time for their sterling service records, and they will long hold their places in maritime history as two of the highest capacity tankers ever built. The Super Tanker Prairial came into service in 1979, the fourth version of the Batilis class of tankers. It was the only one among the three others in its class to exceed a decade in service, sailing the seas for nearly a quarter century before it was scrapped in 2003. Over all those years, the ship was also known to go by other names, such as Sea Brilliance, Hellasphos, and most appropriately, Sea Giant. With a GRT of 274,826 tons, Prairial boasted a cargo capacity that is practically unrivaled in maritime history, somewhere between 555,000 and an astounding 604,000 tons. Its double propeller quad steam turbine engine system delivered only a top speed of about 16 knots, but that's still not too shabby for what is considered the third largest ship ever constructed, as two of the entries remaining on our list were modified from their original dimensions. Prairial was a whopping 1,359 feet long, with a beam of 206 feet wide, which was challenged only by two other vessels. That is until 1981, when the sister ship which gave Prairial's class its name was extended. The first of its homonymous class, the Batilla Supertanker hit the ocean in 1976 as one of the largest vessels in the world, and it leapt up the list when its length was further extended in 1981. Batilla's could move a massive amount of cargo with a 275,268 gross tonnage rating, and after its modification came in with the same length and beam measurements as Prairial. Variances in the other types of tonnage, however, give Batilla's the slight edge over its sister ship. Its deadweight tonnage when constructed was superior to virtually any ship that ever existed and Batilus must also be given credit for being the first of its class. When it comes down to it, though, measuring the largest seafaring vessels is somewhat counterintuitively a game of inches, and in terms of bragging rights among the Batilus class, one is ever so slightly the largest of the large. The second of the Batilis tankers built in 1976 was the Balamia, with specifications virtually identical to Batilis. But the Pierre Guillaume, which set sail in 1977, reigned over them all, albeit briefly. Due to the immense size of the Batilis class tankers during a time when oil production was becoming less profitable every year, every one of them except Prairial were unprofitable enough that they enjoyed surprisingly limited lifespans. In the case of the Pierre Guillaume, which at the time was the single largest ship by gross tonnage which had ever set sail, its entire service run amounted only to six short years. Pierre Guillaume beat out its sisters in terms of size only by virtue of mere inches on the beam, make that one inch to be exact, sporting the same 1,359-foot length as its predecessor 
processors. Its gross tonnage rating, nearly 276,000 tons, was and remains the largest of any ship ever built, but one rival, built the same year, would take the overall title when it underwent renovation from its original already huge dimensions. The super tanker Seawise Giant has a colorful history befitting the all-time size champion of ocean-going vessels. The ship was contracted in 1979 by a Greek business mogul, who for reasons that remain unclear refused to take delivery. And as you might imagine, it took a while to find a replacement buyer with pockets deep enough to even begin negotiations. Eventually, the gigantic ship was sold to the owner of a Hong Kong firm, who inexplicably decided that it needed to be even larger. After a retrofit that lengthened and widened it considerably, and increased its capacity by 140,000 tons, the ship clocked in at a ridiculous 1,504 feet in length smashing the Batilla's class by nearly half the length of a football field. Its beam rating of 225 feet was also by far the largest ever, with a respectable gross tonnage rating of 260,941 tons. Seawise Giant was put into service transporting crude oil between the U.S. and the Middle East, and it was in the performance of that duty in 1988 that the tanker came under attack by Iraqi bombers and was sunk. Incredibly, even though it was declared a complete loss, it only took a year for a Norwegian company to salvage it. Not for scrap, but for repair. The wreck was transported to Singapore, where a restoration job took place which required 3,700 tons of new steel. It was renamed the Happy Giant and put back into service until 2004, when it was converted to a permanently moored storage vessel. Its 36-ton anchor now sits in the Hong Kong Maritime Museum. While it no longer roams the sea, the Seawise Giant was a sight to behold and an amazing feat of engineering. It was longer than the Empire State Building is tall. It could fit St. Paul's Cathedral within its cargo holds four times. It's not just the largest ship of all time, it's the single biggest self-propelled man-made object ever built.